We saw Shirley, and it was fantastic. I, I was a fan of Madeline's Madeline going into this film, and so mm -hmm. I kind of knew what to expect um, from Josephine Decker. But mm -hmm. this score was amazing, Ooh, and you. I saw the assistant, and it, it felt kind of the same as well as far as the the sparse, st like staccato sound. Was that something that you knew you wanted to do going into a film like this? So for Shirley, I didn't really know what the end result was going to be, uh -huh. but I was very much open to going on a journey with Josephine. What she said to me early on was that she was very interested in the female voice as an instrument in the film. And so being that I'm, my background is as a performing and recording artist and a vocalist, I was like, okay. But what was great is that I really got to lean on my choral classical background, and then I got to kind of take it to other places. There's this quality to the film where it's kind of like a fever dream, and so in using the female voice, it was to represent some of the different characters, but also to represent this kind of like trance state or an activation that would happen when certain things would trigger a character, whether it was um, Shirley's imagination and creating the novel or one of her, not necessarily appreciate, but one of her dreams. You know, so um, just trying to create textures with the voice that would give you that sense of like magic or danger. Besides vocals, I use just a string quartet and percussive elements she seemed to respond really well to. So I guess that's why it became a theme. And it's interesting because some people think it's guitar, but it's actually like just the different string instruments, sometimes viola, sometimes cello. There was a lot of really cool layered vocals too that were in Shirley and in these really specific moments of, I think, flipping the cards over and then at the very end when just things kind of become chaotic. Did you, how do you, were you involved in, in the singing? Of Those are all my vocals. That's all you, okay, yeah. that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. how, how do you layer your own voice like what is that process like? um it was a it was kind of like setting the palette well one thing that i did i don't know, I don't know how like involved this is going to be yeah. if you want this type of detail it, so, yeah <laughs> but um basically when i was thinking about these trance like states and um the kind of space between presence and daydream or the spirit world and the, the world that we're existing in and engaging with each other in. I was thinking about like, what would I want that to sound like? Do, does it have minor qualities? I thought it was minor, it wasn't gonna be major. And then what kept coming up to me was um, um, Le, Mystery, the, the, Le Mystère Voix du Bulgare. I don't know if you remember the Bulgarian women singers. They had like a lot of, I think it was the 90s, they had like pop hits. And I was thinking about the tonal quality of those types of harmonies. And so that was like my base for where I wanted to go when I was like building these chords. It inspires a very specific response. It's not a pop sound. It's not a soul sound. It's kind of like, like how they describe themselves, like mystery or something in the air. Right, yeah. And what I loved too is that of the three projects you have at Sundance, they're all directed by women. And was that intentional? Is that something that you sought out moving forward with your career? You know, um, I think that women have been reaching out to me, and that's wonderful. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful and excited. Uh, and so far, the majority of the films that I've scored have been directed by women, um, with the exception of one film so far. Uh, is there something that you're looking forward to in 2020, specifically like honing in on um, composing more for film or to be a solo artist? Or are you just trying to juggle them um, all? You know, and it's not even a juggle. Okay. Um, I've been an independent artist for 20 plus years now, and I've been composing for film for four years. So um, I look at it as an addition to my, my range of creative expression. And at the end of the day, I'm an artist and I create work, and I'm excited that I have a few ways to express myself and I can kind of shuttle through phases whether I'm working on a theatrical concert and collaborating with a dance ensemble, whether I'm doing a symphonic commission, whether I'm writing for an opera, whether I'm composing for film or just touring with my bands. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm good. I feel good in all those spaces. Amazing. What to you is the most beautiful sound in the entire world? Baby laughing. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's a good one. Are you trying to...
trying to incorporate any of that in like you know <laughs> I, I hadn't thought of it but I think that there's a sweetness in the tonality in the Shirley score when we first see Rose's baby yes. and so I guess that gives you a little glimpse that I, I have a sensitive sensitivity to new human beings yeah you know and yeah. all the wonder that 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 represents to me totally yeah potential and everything yeah cool <laughs> last question i noticed so i was looking at your instagram which is great by the way okay and i noticed that you hashtag um the work is the way a lot can you kind of explain like what that means so um you know being an independent artist my entire career um it's a mantra that i came to a couple of years ago uh, you know, you're gonna, there are going to be lots of ups and downs and trials and tribulations. And it's important to know who you are as a human being and how that relates to your artistry so that you know what you're really doing it for and if you're in it for the long run. And what I've found is that if I'm focused on creation, then I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty much good. I'm in a really good space, regardless if I'm working frequently or, you know. And really, when I, so when I say the work is the way, it's not about work as... I make a living at this, absolutely. You can monetize it. But I am compelled to create because it's what my soul is best at. So it's something that I'm always going to do. And I realized at a certain point that instead of fighting with the structure of how do I survive as an artist, the question I needed to ask myself is how do I keep creating work? And somehow exploring that question turned into working consistently and so that's why I believe that the work is the way like regardless if it, you're in an ebb or a flow the work is the reason it's that for my being and um, as long as I keep my head down grind stay focused on my work I'm going to be whole I'm going to be all right